What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to the channel. Yes, I know it's been a while since I pushed a video out and things have been getting quite busy at my end here and it's getting harder and harder for me to create new content. But here we are, we're gonna keep trying and we're gonna keep pushing. So thank you so much to everybody who's patiently waited and is subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it a lot. So a few weeks back, me and my good friend Leon, we got together and we covered one of the most iconic tracks from rock history in my opinion, Empire by one of the most iconic bands in my opinion in rock history, Queensryche. If you haven't checked out the video, please go ahead and check it out. It's there in the channel. We had so much fun and I really want to thank Leon and give a huge shout out to him. If you aren't subscribed to Leon, you're definitely missing out on a lot. So go out and check out his channel and please do subscribe as well. A few of you guys asked me for the preset breakdown of the preset that I used on this particular track. And this video is pretty much about that if you haven't guessed it so far. But before we do that, it's time for the honorable mentions for this particular video. So I really want to thank Huang Thatch and Jason Perry. I hope I got your names right. For making a contribution towards the channel through my PayPal. I really appreciate it guys. And if you're wondering how you can make a contribution towards the channel, of course a like and subscribe goes a long way and it keeps me motivated but it doesn't help to pay the bills. So if you want to support me monetarily, check the links in the description box below as to how you can send me something over at PayPal or you can use YouTube thanks as well. I'd really appreciate that. And in return, I'll give you a shout out on my upcoming videos as well. Well, enough of that self-promotion, let's get into the Axe FX2 and let's dial the stone in. So I've got Axe Edit in front of me and we've got a blank preset like always. What we're gonna do, if you haven't followed the channel before, we're gonna build the preset from scratch, block by block, and hopefully I can share some tips along the way as to what I use to create the tone. Now, when it comes to the amp, which is the most important part of any tone, uh, well, 50%, I would say. <laughs> the amp, when you research a bit about this particular tone and research a bit about Queen's Rack tone, uh, I believe you will not find much information over the internet. There will be some clues here and there, but in my research, I couldn't find a definitive answer as to what Queensryche or Christy Garmo and Michael Wilton kind of used on these tracks. But I did find one article which kind of pointed towards uh, them shifting from Marshall JCMs to kind of uh, Soldano heads and FET preamps. So I instantly connected there because Soldano is such an amazing amp to use and I believe kind of drives the tone really home for me when I think of Soldano amps. And I did try the Soldano amp out in the Axe FX2 and it did wonders for me as well. Full disclosure, the backing track that I used already had one guitar in there, so I was not sure whose tone I was recreating. Let's just assume I was recreating Christy Garmo's tone because I love his tone a lot and his playing is absolutely fantastic. So let's go ahead and choose the amp over there. I'll link an article below as well as to kind of which tells us what they exactly used. So we've got the Soldano 100 lead amp over here. You could choose a lot of other Soldano amps as well. There are, I believe, four or five variations. This one sounds the best to me in terms of gain structure. And I believe this is kind of which amp that brought me really close to the tone. So we'll use this amp Solo 100 lead. Uh, let's go ahead and dial in the cabs as well. Now, when it came to the cabs, you know, I read that they were actually using 1x12 cabinets, which they called as compression boxes. But if you try using 1x12 cabs, your tone's going to sound really boxy and really kind of, you know, boxed in, and it's not going to sound really good. So I kind of deviated from that, and I actually ended up using 4x12 cabinets. I did use two cabs here in parallel, and I'll explain why. So let's do the first cab over here and the second cab over here. Why use parallel cabs and not use a stereo ultra res? Uh, reason being, it gives me much more granular control over each of the cabs as to what I can modify in each cab. For example, the high cut and the low cut. If you use a stereo ultra res, you're pretty much gonna be using common settings for both of the cabinets. So hence, I kind of deviated from that. There's nothing wrong with using stereo ultra res. It's just a different approach in this case, which is good to always experiment and find out. So for the cabs, what I used was actually 
F051, which is going to be a 4x12 Uber V30. I believe this is a Celestian V30 sort of a speaker setup. Uh, we'll leave everything as it is for now. And for the cab, second cab, what I did is I chose F050, which is again a Uber T75. I believe the speaker is slightly different. For the first cab, I'm going to mic it up with a 421 dynamic mic, which is a fairly bright mic. Uh, and I'll touch upon that a little bit later as well. And for the second one, I'll use 57 dynamic as well, which is also fairly bright as well. Now, for before we tweak anything else, I want to keep everything at stock and I want you to hear how the tone is sounding. I am on the bridge pickup, the tones unfold, the volumes unfold, and this is how it sounds. <laughs> So right off the bat, I think that sounds incredible. I haven't tweaked anything at all in the amps or in the cabs. And you can see, I just added the mics to be honest, but that's not too much tweaking in my opinion. And we haven't even touched the amp yet. And still we could get a pretty usable tone straight out of the Soldano amp. And this is what I like about this amp. Even at stock setting, it really rocks and it's really good sounding. But we're gonna tweak a few things to make it sound more closer to the tone that I wanted to have. So let's start tweaking the amp. I'm gonna bring the input drive down to four. Bass, I'm gonna push down a little bit to around four as well. Now, input drive, I kept it low because you don't need too much distortion to have a good chunky sort of rhythm tone when you especially have layers of guitars playing in this case they might be two or they might be quad guitars playing i don't know what they did in the studio actually so less drive sometimes can mean better clarity and better tone as well in my opinion so keep that in mind uh mids i'm going to push down to around 2.75 because my guitar is fairly mid based so i keep the mids usually low in most of my presets if you've noticed treble i'm going to push it down to 3.8 again we don't want the you know tone to sound too ice picky or too harsh and that was again going back to the mic selections that we've done which are fairly bright mics with the 421 dynamic and a 57 so I'm going to keep that low presence. I'm going to push slightly up. This is again by taste. Master volume, I'm not going to touch, but again, master volume is always tricky. The higher you go, the more beefy your tone is going to sound. The lower you go, the more tinny your tone is going to sound. I believe I'm going to get some clipping as well. So what I did is I pushed the level down to minus 13 dB. This is purely based on your setup. You might not even need to do this step. For the cabs, what I did is I First things first, I always push the low cut to 80 hertz for both of the cabs. Now, I don't believe I touched the high cut at all. I kept it where it is because as you heard, the tone was sounding pretty good, you know, by default as well. But what I did is I went into the room section of the first cab and I added some air. What is air? Air is the natural sound of an amp. Think of it playing without a cab what would an amp head sound like so the more percentage of air you add the more natural sound of the amp head you're letting through so in this case i'm doing 27 percent at a frequency of around 6100 or let's say 6200 and also what i did is to get a more sort of a squishy and sort of a tube sort of a feeling what you can do is going to the power supply it's very hard to explain this one what we can do is add some more supply sag that's going to be tweaking the tone a little bit and making it sound more squishy and more sort of a i don't know if detuned is the right word but it makes it sound really cool it's a subtle effect so keep in mind you might not even hear much of a change when you are hearing it through uh, your desktop studio monitors or through an amp but if you hear it through headphones you can definitely hear it so what i'm going to do is push the um, you know sag supply sag to around 8.4 and that's gonna bring it to a more squishy sort of a sound. Uh, also, the Variac, I'm gonna push it down to around 75%. Now, this is gonna make the amp a little bit more louder and more, uh, it's gonna help it scream a little bit more if that's the right word. So hear me out now. A 
again it sounds really cool with just an amp and a cab it's that good isn't it but we're going to add a few more things to make it sound even more richer so the next thing i added is a chorus block here now when it comes to chorus you could also use a detune block here as well it's just to give that 80 sort of a feeling to the tone so with the rate i always like it to keep it you know as low as possible not to lfo sync the, the chorus is, by the way, an 80 style chorus. Uh, the mix, I'm going to bring it down to around 23%. Not too much chorus in there. And also in the tone section, I always like to keep the dimension mode high. Uh, next, what I did is actually add in some uh, reverb to the tone because the tone sounded quite dry. And obviously in a mix, you probably have a little bit of reverb in there. Although I'm pretty sure there's tons of more stuff added when it comes to actual studio production. So let's go ahead and add the reverb. For the reverb, I always like London Plate when it comes to 80 sort of a tone. Again, huge shout out to Leon Todd for letting me know about this, sharing this on the channel. It's an absolutely amazing reverb. So I really love using this all of the time. Uh, change the quality to high, bring the mix down to around 14%, not too much reverb. So this is how it sounds now. If you play other stuff like That sounds really cool. How about this? That sounds really cool in my opinion. And believe it or not, that's the preset. That's all it took for me to kind of get closer to the tone. And it's a simple preset, believe it or not. And, and let this be a testament to how good these Soldano amps are actually. You don't need to tweak it too much to get it to the tone you want to get to. Although I'm pretty sure if you use different caps, you can really change the taste of the tone and really change the color of the tone. So that's pretty much the rhythm tone I used. I double tracked my guitars. Now there was a clean part as well and there's a solo part as well. For the solo tones, I believe Leon uh, used his live preset. So please head over to his channel, check out the preset breakdown for his live tone. And I believe that's what he used. And it sounded incredible. I believe that was a really good sounding tone. For the clean tone, I'm gonna quickly run through the preset which I used for the clean tone. Obviously it's gonna take a lot of time to kind of reconstruct that preset again. So that's the clean tone what I used. I've got a compressor in the beginning and an amp. The amp is a Solo 888 Clean, which is, I believe, a clean channel of the Soldano amp again. The, uh, the cab is just a 1x12 in this case. Uh, it sounded really cool. Uh, mic'd up with a D112 dynamic mic. Um, we've got a chorus here, quad chorus, um, and an enhanced block and some reverb. The compressor is a pedal comp one. I've got a decent amount of compression going. Five, um, attack is low and the release is also low. The mix is 100% and the level is set to five. This kind of pushes the amp a little bit more and gives you that sort of clean tone out of it because I believe the amp isn't that strong when it comes to the clean tone. Uh, going over to the amp, uh, input drive is set to around six. Uh, bass and mids and treble are like that. Um, treble slightly high, presence slightly high and the master volume is quite high as well. Um, quad chorus, I believe I used one of the tri-chorus tri blocks that I've got set up already, which I got from the Axfix 2. Uh, I've shared it many times on the channel. I've put it in the link of the description for this video as well. I'll put a link in the description as well for this particular video. Uh, I believe I tweaked a few things in there, like the feedback and everything, and I brought the mix down a little bit. Enhance is pretty much stock. 
and the reverb again is going to be London plate which is in parallel now at 100% mix and the level is at zero so this one you want to play it on the you know coil tap sort of a split position if you have one in your guitar and I did do believe I mixed it up with some of the piezo as well from the uh, Unibol Music Man JP15 guitar that I have here. So without the piezo in, uh, on the coil tap position, which is a split of these two humbuckers, and I've got the coil tap on as well now. So this is how the tone sounds. <laughs> With the piezo kind of mixed in, I'm going to increase the piezo volume to almost like 90% or something. It sounds like this. And just with the piezo on. sounds really sweet in my opinion so that's the tone i used for the clean uh parts as well double tracked it as always and that's pretty much the presets guys let me know in the comment section what do you guys think about this tone uh would you want me to put them on axe change do you guys still use it i don't know how many axe fx2 users still use it but let me know i'll be happy to put the uh, put both of the presets up there or if you want to you know build it along with me that's even better because you get to know certain things about uh the preset and you Give me some watch time. <laughs> As always, leave a like if you love the video and please do subscribe if you're not already. It helps the channel, it supports me and it lets me create more of these uh, videos more for you guys. And until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you guys stay safe guys. Keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.